impartation from Romans 1 verse 11 and 12. Scripture says we can receive the anointing through impartation. I have written out seven different kinds of impartation. There's many, I presume, but these are what I found in Scripture, and, and I want to share my personal experience as well. Romans 1, verses 11 and 12, Paul writes, For I long to see you, that I may impart some gift to you, that you may be established, that is, I may be encouraged together with you by the mutual faith, both of you and me. As I said, there's seven types. My friends, I really pray that you will receive impartation of that what I can give you. Peter said, silver and gold have I none, but that what I have, I impart, I give to you. And right now by faith, I impart prophetic impartation, prophetic anointing, that you will hear, see, and deliver most accurately. Let's have a look at these seven types quickly. Impartation can come through the laying on of hands. I'm going to go through these scriptures quick. Genesis 48, uh, Israel stretched out his hand. He crossed his hands over like that, and he ministered, he ministered to Ephraim and to Manasseh. He knew exactly what he was doing when he did that. Exodus 29. Well, this is a, this is a different one. Aaron put his hands on, the, on a bull. And he consecrated it and he imparted. And he ministered to this thing to be the sacrifice. Hello. Leviticus 16. Aaron again did it. He put his ha hands imparted on a live goat that was to be the sacrifice. As a sin offering. Numbers 8 verse 10. Well the Israelites here went and laid their hands on the Levites. So that they could be set apart. Consecrated to be priests. Laying on of hands in the New Testament. Was primarily done to receive the Holy Spirit. In Acts chapter 8 verse 15. We see that. Uh, when the Holy Spirit had come down. They. They received the Spirit, and then they laid hands on them so that, that others would receive as well. Acts 19, verse 6, Paul, had his, Paul laid hands on these guys. One to, uh, 2 Timothy 1, verse 6, through, Tim, Paul says to Timothy, Timothy, my son, by the laying on of hands, you've received this gift. That was impartation. Acts 13, verse 2 and 3. Ah, I like this. Separate for me Paul, which is uh, Saul, which became Paul, and Barnabas. It was an act to impart healing. And, and there was impartation, that separation, there was impartation that took place. Mark 16, verse 18. And they will lay hands on the sick. What for? To impart healing. My friends, God has anointed you. Impartation can be... Transferred through teaching as well. Jesus was busy teaching. Crowds of people around him. And in Luke 8 verse 46. This, this lady with the issue of blood. Pushed through the maddening crowds. Touched the hem of his garment. And received impartation. Impartation can come through. Corporate anointing. Point number three. Listen King Saul. In the Old Testament was not a prophet. But he walked with the prophets. According to 1 Samuel 10, verse 6 to 13, he walked with the prophets, and as he walked with them, impartation came upon him through corporate anointing, and he started prophesying. This is quite a radical one. You know what? If you sleep with dogs, you pick up fleas. The scripture says, you know, if you, if you walk with the wise, you grow wise. Walk with the prophetic, see what will happen. There'll be corporate anointing that will be transferred upon you. Point four, impartation can even take place over long distances. You say, whoa, how? I was sitting in front of the television and, and this preacher was on and as he was speaking, I went like, I want that. And I went up to the TV and I, and I like reached out and put my hand on that screen and as I put my hand on that screen, whew, Holy Spirit came down upon me. My friends, 
Don't stress about this. You know what? You can be on the phone with someone right now watching this YouTube clip. Open your heart up and see what will happen. There will be impartation that will take place. I picked up a book. I'm not talking of the Bible now. I picked up a good book. Actually, it was Leonard Ravenhill, Revival Praying. And as I was reading this book, years, years ago, I was about 19 years old. No, not so long ago. As I was reading that, it was like, it was like yesterday. I still remember the occasion. It, I had this, I'm reading, I'm reading his book, and it was like, Father God, I receive impartation from Reverend Ravenel now. And it was, just felt the Holy Spirit come upon me. My life changed that day. You can receive it. You say, okay, well, where's it in Scripture? Matthew 8? Yeah? You know the centurion guy? Well, he, he had a servant that was sick, and he went to the master, and he said, Master, just give me the word, and he'll be healed. So, so give me the word, Master, and I will go back there, and when I'm there, I'll speak the word, because I'm a man of authority, and he'll be healed. My friends, right now where you are, you can receive. The best way to receive impartation, this, this is for me personally, is in Act 2-2, and I experienced this, it was radically amazing, all by myself, in my own living room, closed my eyes, and, and I was just worshipping the Lord, and, and all of a sudden the presence of God came down. There was no interaction, there was no book, there was no, no long distance television, radio, TV, it wasn't something where somebody came and laid their hands on me, it was like tongues of fire came upon me. Point number six, impartation through oil. This is awesome. I've received this. Exodus chapter 30, verses 25 to 32. And it shall be holy anointing oil. You say, well, hold on. I don't have holy anointing oil. Go get your cooking oil. Pray over it and say, Lord God, by faith, I separate this oil holy to you. Now take that oil and go and consecrate and anoint that, and let impartation come. My friends, I've done it. I've literally anointed my wallet. I've anointed my refrigerator. I anointed my motor car. You know, we've got dogs. I've even anointed my dogs with oil. And I've said, Lord God, I'm separating my animals and my pets, my front door in my house. I walked up to the door of my house, put oil in it, and I prayed over the door. And I said, Lord, I'm calling on you that my house, my home, will receive impartation of peace. My home, Lord, will carry a prophetic anointing in character. Isaiah 10 verse 27. The yoke will be destroyed because of the anointing oil. <laughs> I had debt. I got my debt out. I put it on the table. I got the oil. I poured oil over my this, this debt I had. And it was broken in Jesus' name. The anointing oil shatters and destroys the yoke that binds. James 5 verse 14 to 16. If there's any sick among you, call for the elders and let them anoint. Let there be impartation through the anointing of oil. Number seven, impartation through the belongings. Hello, my shirt. The belongings of the believers. Jesus' clothing carried anointing in it. And as that woman with the issue of blood reached out and touched the garment of Jesus, she was healed. You say, well, hold, yeah, that was Jesus. Yeah, but there was Elijah. His mantle, Elijah had gone, gone off. And his mantle carried that anointing. Elisha picked it up and struck the water. Boom! Miracles took place. Let me say, not only that, hold on, Jesus' cloth was Matthew 14, verse 36. Elijah's mantle is 2 Kings, 2 Kings 2, verse 14. But remember Moses' rod, Exodus 17, verse 5 and 6. And the Lord spoke to Moses, go before the people and take some of the elders with you. And when you strike the rock, water will come out. Let me tell you, that rod, 
that rod had anointing on it. There was impartation that took place in Acts chapter 19 through aprons and handkerchiefs. You know, it wasn't something, Paul didn't blow his nose and send it off. No, not in the least. It was a clean handkerchief, a clean garment, prayed over it. Lord, release your impartation anointing now on this item and sent it off. And as it was put on that sick person, they were healed. Elisha's staff, 2 Kings 4.2. I like this one. Peter's shadow. Acts chapter 5, 15 and 16. A shadow has no power. A shadow's got no authority. But as Peter walked down the street, his shadow fell on the people. Whoa. And they were healed. My friend, that what you carry, that, that shadow that you have can bring impartation and healing to others around you. Make sure you walk in the shadow of Jesus. <laughs> And the final one was Elisha's bones. I love that. You know, the guy died. He's gone. There wasn't even a drop of flesh left on his bones. And another dead man, killed in the war, was thrown into the cave where Elisha's bones were. And the guy bounced right back out because his bones had power. There was impartation that took place as that dead man touched Elisha's bones. Can those bones live? Oh, wow. Those bones are going to live. God's going to bring to pass the good work he began in you. God's not finished. God's not done with you yet. Impartation's about to take place of another level in your life. My testimony personally. I, I, had, I had impartation take place to me when I sat alone. I was out in the country. I was 17 years old. And, and I remember this day, I had just given my heart back to the Lord. And, and I was all alone, and the presence of God came down upon me. It was amazing, amazing impartation. And I remember I went into a meeting, and I was called out. I was nine years old at this time. And, and the Bible school students in the full gospel church all came and laid hands on me. I received impartation that day. I can tell you there's many times impartation came. I remember impartation through prophetic prayer. My first year at Bible school, I grabbed this lecturer and I said, I insist you pray for me. And he said, no, 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 I couldn't. He couldn't, he was too busy. I asked him to come to the library. And he came into the library and I closed the door behind us and it had a lock on the outside. And I said, sir, you have to pray for me. And he couldn't get out, so he did. He prayed for me. That day, my life changed. I received impartation for teaching. Impartation is amazing. I believe there's impartation in travail. You know, when I graduated from Seminary Bible College, all my friends went off into ministry. And myself, I went home and I said, Darling, Karen, what do I do? And my wife said to me, Mark, sit down and pray. Wait on the Lord. Well, I did. You know, my praying, my travailing, I never knew, but it took me on a journey of four years. In those four years, I cried out to God. I even prayed that this cup will be removed from me. And suddenly, suddenly, on one day, suddenly, I received impartation from the Holy Spirit. By myself, the presence of God came upon me. My life was radically turned around. I was inebriated, drunk under the power of the Holy Spirit. My friends, I want to pray for you. And I, and I really believe that impartation will take place into your life. Remember 1 Timothy 5.22, do not lay hands eagerly, hastily on another. Well, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to say to you, if you want to receive, you receive. But by faith, I do lay my hands upon you. And I say in Jesus' name, receive this day. Amen.